Y'all shout out the wrong stuff. He builds an altar and names the altar Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is our banner. That loosely in Hebrew, Nisi is a reference to a banner. And this banner lends itself to a flag or a pole that will be out in front of the army. That it lends itself to a rallying point. That so much so in Psalm 60, it was the place that they could run to when they were fleeing for their lives. My suggestion here today is that Moses, the children of Israel, and Joshua all need a banner. That Moses, children of Israel, and Joshua all need a rallying point. All of them, each party represented, needs a, ras- a rallying point. But more importantly, you need a rallying point as well. You need a rallying point or reality as well. And the banner that Moses needs in his weariness and that the children of Israel learn about in their immaturity and the one that Joshua needs for the future is available to everybody here today as well. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will, can you say that with me? I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, we've come to enter his gates with thanksgiving and to enter his courts with praise. We've come to be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Anybody know that he's good? Has he been good? Has he blessed you all week? So let's just sing a few love songs unto the Lord. Come on, if you know it, join in with us and say, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way and yes i praise you i lift you up i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise lift it up with us i love you you. come on say it i love you Yes, I praise you. Come on, let's lift them up. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, lift it up if you really love them. I love you. Wait. 
I just gotta tell you, Lord, I love you. Love him this morning. And something I've learned if I really love you, I can't give you what I like. If I love you, I have to give you what you like. This morning, if you love God, He really likes praise. I said, if you really love God, He loves praise. He inhabits the praises of His people. Come on, put your hands together. Psalm says, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. Say, I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. Say, I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Do you love? Yes, I do. I love to praise his name. Oh, oh. I love to praise his, his holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my sword and shield. He's my wheel. He's my wheel. In the middle of a wheel. Of a wheel. I know him never. Know him never. He'll, He'll never let me down. Let me down. He's just a jewel. I have found Hallelujah Hallelujah I love Oh Hallelujah Hallelujah I love Say with me I 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time. Oh, He's my rock. He's my rock. My rock, my, my sword. Rock, my sword He's a wind. He's a wind. In the middle of the I know he'll never. I know he'll never. Stay right there. Come on. I know he'll never. I know he'll never. Never. Let Can you testify? Out. He'll never. Storms may rise, but he'll never. Winds may blow, but God will never. He's just a jewel. I have found. Let me say hallelujah, hallelujah, I love. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love. Help me say hallelujah, 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 Oh, I love you, praise. When I'm feeling good, I love you, praise. When I'm feeling down, I love you, When I'm troubled, I love you, praise. When I have peace, I love you, praise. In plenty, I love you, praise. Or in want, I love you, praise. Sometimes. I can't help myself I love you, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me. I love to praise. I love to praise. I love to praise. Anybody love to praise? Anybody love to praise? Forget about your neighbor, just praise. I love to praise. I love to praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For our God is a good God and worthy of all our praise. Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning all on the World Wide Web. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We look to our scripture this morning, which simply says, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name and make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. All the earth shall worship thee and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. We want to lift up those who are going through challenges this morning among us. We are praying for the Stafford family in the passing of Deacon Earl Stafford Sr.'s brother, Eugene Stafford. We are praying for Nadia and Crystal in the loss of their father, Samuel Coleman. We lift up Selwyn Cox as his eldest brother, Dallas Fowler, now rest with the Lord. We lift up the Wesley and McCain families as we pray with and for our pastor and Deuce and Cooper 
in the passing away of Debbie's mom, Ernestine McCain. Now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our God, you are awesome. For you have kept us and protected us through yet another week and allowed us to rise this morning and behold a brand new day. A day that you have made. A day that is pregnant with possibilities. A day that begins a week that you already know what will happen and you are with us. Now, oh God, we have gathered in your name to praise you and to magnify your holy name. Lord God, we want to make your praise glorious. Lord, let this service be one that magnifies you and just rest upon our hearts that we may do what the preacher has been given to give to us. That we may listen intently. That we may give our hearts to the message and magnify you with obeying your word. Come now, Lord, thy people bless. Come now, Lord, and give your word success. For it is on you that we depend. Bless us in a way that only you can. And we will be careful to give you all the honor and all the praise for you are worthy God and it is in Jesus' name that we lift you up this morning in Jesus' name that we thank you for our pastor and ask you to just bless him as he goes forth this day bless us all in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn this morning is simply praise him. Praise him. For he is worthy to be praised.
Now there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know it's the presence of the Lord. And I know you've got that peace that passes all understanding. But I don't want you to keep it this morning. I want you to pass it, pass the peace. Street. Good morning to our, our internet family. We are blessed to be in this place at this time for such a time as this. Amen? Amen and amen. Do we have any guests this morning? Any guests? Wave your hand if, you have, if you're a guest. Amen. We welcome you this morning um, in the name of Jesus and your neighbor, I pray, and the ones that have walked the aisles greeting everyone that you were greeted even at the door when you came in with the heart of Christ. Amen? Amen. We do have a special guest today. She has traveled all the way from Haiti. And she is a part of our partner in Haiti, Mission of Grace in the orphanage part. And Miss Claudia Marceline, would you please stand, ma'am? Grace and peace be unto you, my sister. She is here on a two-year visa, if I'm, if I'm correct, to going to school. She is uh, living right now in Florida with Ms. Lynn um, from Mission of Grace, and she is able to start high school in the fall, amen. Do we have any birthdays this, uh, this week? If you had a birthday, please stand this week, amen. Let us celebrate you as you have continued to celebrate yourself. God bless you and happy birthday. If we have any anniversaries, if you celebrate an anniversary this year, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you celebrate an anniversary this week, please stand, would you please stand with you and your spouse. Amen, amen. All the way in the back, how many years? 16, amen. Coming up in the rear, right here. 13, amen. Over here, 
22. Amen. And you. 43. God bless you. You all may be seated in the name of Jesus. Congratulations for making it thus far. Amen. We will be praying for you for a lifetime. Can I just brag on Alpha Street right now? Can I just brag on my church family right now? As many of you know, we had an event yesterday and it was our Brother's Keeper initiative where we served over 600 families. We served over 600 families, which equals up to about 1,600 children. With school supplies, with means to, to buy school supplies and uniforms, as well as a backpack um, that the children just lit up when they saw. So if you volunteered for Brother's Keeper yesterday, I want to celebrate you. Can you stand at the moment? Thank you so much for all that you did to warm the hearts of the families that you were able to touch yesterday. I want to brag on my core team who have been walking with me all year <laughs> in the planning process and going through all kinds of things just to make it happen yesterday. And I want to brag on this Alpha Street family because it was your tithes and your offerings that we were able to provide so much. Another arm of Brothers Keeper is the delivery process which you did not see yesterday. And that is we serviced 25 area schools and delivered school supplies to those schools who, when our school supplies run out, they are able to provide. And for those who were not able to partake in our initiative yesterday, they will be able to get some. So that number, that number rose to about 13,000 children. So thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you, Alpha Street. Thank you, Lord. And it was your tithes and your offerings that did that. And there are several ways to give several ways to give. If you can push that QR code on your phone, you can see the many ways that you can give. We have many initiatives just like Brothers Keeper. And we are our Brothers Keeper. And we are here to meet the need of our people here and outside of these doors and around the globe. And so us being brothers, our brother and our sister's keeper, we can commune around our Lord's table together. If you were ready, your communion elements. And sit around this table with me. And remember what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. If you don't have your, any communion elements, would you raise your hand? We have deacons in the aisles that will be able to service you. Amen. Well, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he lifted bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body 
broken for you. Let us eat together. And in the same manner, he took his cup, he blessed it, and he said, this is my blood shed for you, for there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Let us drink together. Play with, pray with me, family. Lord, as we remember the great work that you have done, we are grateful. We are thankful, Lord God, to be in this place, to commune with one another. But most of all, Lord God, we are grateful to commune with you. So as we go about the rest of our service, may you continue to be pleased with what we are offering up to you. Bless those who are in the seat. Bless who, those who are watching. Pour into us. Continue to pour. Because we know that your blood reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. So reach for us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As Trinity comes and renders our song right before our preached moment. I don't necessarily have to really introduce this person because he is a person on our staff for our young adult ministries. And it has, that is the Reverend Dr. Robert Ty Jones, who is an excellent preacher and proclaimer of the word. So be ready yourselves for the preached word and the preached word through song, amen. amen.
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Will y'all help me out? Look to somebody, to a neighbor on your road. Say, neighbor, I need some help right along through here. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I'm going to try it one more time. I know it's 8 o'clock in the morning and it's early, but let me try it one more time because the balcony missed it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let me try it one more time. That whole back row still missing it. I got one more in me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Is there anybody got reason? To give God praise here on good Sunday morning woke you up this morning and started you on your way and put food on the table I got a reason to give God praise you may be seated um, to our pastor the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley in his absence let's give God praise for him our hearts and minds are with him and to our visitors and each one of you, my father's children, it's just good to be here um, in the land of the dying on our way to the land of the living. I want to continue with our series um, for the summer, The Names of God. If you would journey with me to a familiar book, book of Exodus, chapter 17. Uh, Exodus chapter 17. Can we do this? I really love the Lord. I really love. Why do you love him? You don't know me. I'm not ashamed to say I love Oh, oh yes I do. I Now sing it like you mean it this time. And say it, check it time again. Come on. Oh, you don't know you. One more time, no music all over the building. Lift it like you mean it. You don't know. Give me the victory. I, I, I know I love him. Oh, I, I really love. Exodus 17, beginning at verse 15, reads of this wise from the Christian Standard Bible, reads like this, And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Indeed, my hand is lifted up toward the Lord's throne. The Lord will be at war with Amalek from generation to generation. Look to somebody left or right and say, neighbor, you need a banner. You may be seated. Lord, we thank you for your preach word here today. Lord, we pray that in some kind of way you will be glorified and your people will be edified and we'll be sure. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. In your son's name we pray, amen. You need a banner. The DMV is interesting to me for a number of reasons. Um, 
being a new resident of the area, I would imagine that I tend to see things with a bit of a different perspective than the natives. It's not a good or bad thing, it's just a thing. And, and one thing that is intriguing to me is the number of memorials that find their homes in this area. You have the Lincoln Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, Martin Luther King Memorial amongst them. That is a tourist attraction, isn't it? And an interesting one at that because people are traveling from great distances to remember. We, we, we will travel a long way to remember an event or a person. However, let me push this even further. Do you know that we will also pay a premium price to remember as well? Did you know that in, America, in today's dollars that the Vietnam Memorial costs $20 million? Did you also know um, that the Lincoln Memorial cost $45 million? But are you aware of the most expensive memorial in the land? It's the 9-11 Memorial. It cost a total of $700 million. Michael Arat was the designer of the 9-11 Memorial, and there was nothing special or in particular about Michael Arat. As a matter of fact, prior to his design of the 9-11 Memorial, he worked for the New York Housing Authority designing police stations. He named his design of the 9-11 Memorial Reflecting Absence. Essentially, isn't that what memorials do? They allow for us to reflect absence. They reflect that what's no longer there. They reflect what's no longer present. As a matter of fact, in total, with the inclusion of an $80 million operating budget, amongst other expenses, that 9-11 Memorial has cost a total of $1.5 billion. Could have been done for less. It was planned out for his dimensions, location, date of completion. And Michael Arat chose not to. He wanted to take this memory very seriously. I couldn't help but to think, Alfred Street, that this is an awful, awfully steep price to simply remember. However, in my quiet time and reflection, I also gathered that the price to remember pales in comparison to the price we pay when we forget. Hear me, the price we pay to remember is steep, but the price we pay when we forget is even more steep. With these prescriptive lenses, I want to lift our selected pericope because in, these, in this series, we sought to look at the names of God. The book of Exodus comes after the book of Genesis. In Genesis, we witness the birth of the world and all of creation. And after Genesis, we come to the book of Exodus. And while Genesis gives birth a witness to the birth, to the birth of creation, Exodus gives witness to the birth of a nation. Our very own Dr. Judy Fentress Williams writes that the departure from the land of Egypt is what happens in the space between God's mighty acts, that the crossing of the sea is the metaphorical birth of a nation. You have the symbols of water and blood that are associated with birth are paired in these events of the blood on the doorposts and the water the Israelites must pass through. That Exodus is the birth narrative story of Israel or God's people. They are the children of Israel. And don't skip over that designation that they are the children of Israel. I'm going to try it one more time. That designation cannot be discounted. They are the children of Israel because children is exactly what they behave like. They were in a situation that they couldn't get themselves out of. They were in. They were going to a promised land, didn't know how to get there. They needed water, didn't know how to provide for themselves. They needed food and didn't know how to provide for themselves as well. There's a lot of what they can't do, but the very thing that they can do is 
is complain. They know how to complain. Every time Moses turns around, all they are doing is complain. They can't feed themselves, but they can complain. They can't drink for themselves, but they can complain. Don't know their own way, but they know how to complain. Doesn't that sound like some teenager or child that lives in your house doesn't pay one bill, but knows how to complain? Can't afford anything, but knows how to complain. Not old enough to dry, drink, or smoke a cigarette, but knows how to complain. And our present pericope has the children of Israel in their first fist fight. As children, all of us have a series of firsts. I mean, your first Easter speech, your first car, your first kiss, your first boo, your first car, but even your first fist fight. They find themselves in their first fist fight, and they are victorious. However, the victory isn't so much about them than it is about the God that has been providing and protecting them. I would argue that this first fist fight sets the tone and trajectory for Israel going forward. You know, when I was younger, we would play basketball at my cousin's house, and my cousin Fred was the only one that had a basketball in the neighborhood, basketball goal that worked in the neighborhood. So the neighborhood would all go to Fred's house to play ball. And I mean to tell you, Alfred Street, there was some epic matches, a lot of trash talking, a lot of sweating and fighting, all in all, a necessary part of my development. But hear me, playing basketball in the hood is a lot like playing cards. Because anytime you sit at a card table, the first question you always have to ask is, how are we playing? It seems that every hood or house had their own way of playing the basketball game because especially when we played the game of 21, was it beat by two? Were we counting tips? Did you have to bag? Was it ones and twos or was it twos or threes? All of these questions had to be answered. And for some reason, I remember this one particular day like yesterday. We were playing king of the court and my youngest cousin PJ was up to play against one of the boys from the neighbor. And I love PJ and I hope he ain't watching. But PJ was never a hooper. Football was more of his thing. PJ never could play, be, play, play basketball. And PJ was getting killed by one of the boys from the neighborhood. And all of a sudden, his older brother Fred, while sitting on the side, yells out, baby, sit. I had never seen or heard this done before, but I heard Fred yell from the side, baby, sit. But remember, I told you, you've got to be clear about the rules at every house that you play at. And Fred yells out, baby, sit, and proceeds to walk on the court, pick up the basketball, and finish the game for his younger brother, PJ. I learned rather quickly from observation that babysit was a hood phenomenon that allowed for another player to come and to finish the game for you. That's what we find in the children of Israel for the very first time. Hear me, Alfred Street. Exodus 17 is God's babysit of Israel's first fist fight that gives way to new revelation about God. Can I bring that back one more time? That sounds good to me. I said Exodus 17 is God's babysit of Israel's first fist fight that gives way to new revelation about God because what they discover is is that the fight was going to show them something. I need to tell somebody here as I pause trying to go to where I really want to, the fight that you are experiencing is going to show you something about God. And after the victory, Moses builds an altar and names the altar Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner. He, I, let me try it one more time. Y'all shout out the wrong stuff. He builds an altar and names the altar Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is our banner. That loosely in Hebrew, Nisi is a reference to a banner. And this banner lends itself to a flag or a pole that would be out in front of the army. That it lends itself to a rallying point. That so much so in Psalm 60, it was the place that they could run to when they were fleeing for their lives. My suggestion here today is that Moses, the children of Israel, and Joshua all need a banner. That Moses, children of Israel, and Joshua all need a rallying point. Point. All of them, each party represented needs a, a rallying point. But more importantly, 
you need a rallying point as well. You need a rallying point or reality as well. And the banner that Moses needs in his weariness and that the children of Israel learn about in their immaturity and the one that Joshua needs for the future is available to everybody here today as well. I came by to tell you that the same banner that, that Moses has, you have as well. That the same banner that Joshua has, you have as well. And the same banner that the children of Israel could rally around is the same banner that you have as well. I thought somebody in here would have moved just a little bit because there's so many things that we run to in our lives and we find them insufficient. Run to friends and families. They're nowhere to be found. Run to our jobs. They get on our nerves. Run into a spouse, but you're mad at them. Running to friends, but they press ignore. But is there anybody that can give God praise because you know that your God is always well, Moses needs a banner. Uh, Moses needs a banner in his weariness because I oftentimes think Moses gets a bad rep. Because sometimes we reprimand or scold, scold Moses due to his repeated anger shown in Exodus. And, and I only want to ask today for some grace for Moses. It was only a few chapters ago that Moses goes from being a refugee to a God called liberator of his own people. He never asked for this. He never applied to be the pastor of Israel Baptist Church. All that happened was he was on the back side of the mountain. He sees a bush burning and a voice comes from the bush and says, you got to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And, and hear me, even at the famed crossing of the Red Sea, those children complain. Was it because that there were no graves in Egypt, that you had taken us away to die in Egypt? What have you done of us bringing us out of Egypt? Right after they get away from the Red Sea, they get to shore, and then they complain again. What are we going to drink? Then they go from there and go to the wilderness of sin. If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the, in, in the land of Egypt. When we sat by our flesh pots and ate our field and bread, you would have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly. They complain again in chapter 17 about drinking water and Moses has to strike a water, strike a rock and water comes out. It's something referred to as the murmuring tradition. Yeah. All of this complaining yeah. and then they have to fight. Amalek comes and meets them at Rephidim, and Moses says to Joshua, choose out some men, because we got to go fight against Amalek. Tomorrow, I'm going to stand up on the hill, and I'm going to hold the staff of the Lord in my hand, and Joshua is obedient, and while Moses, Aaron, and Ur go to the top of the hill, when Moses' hands are up, they are winning. But when he lowers them, they begin to lose. Hands up, they prevail. Hands down, they begin to lose. And don't skip over that description of Moses in verse 12. It says, Moses' hands grew weary. The CSB translated as, Moses' hands grew heavy. Note the pro progression of issues and conflicts uh, that they had needed water, they needed food, needed water again, and then they needed a fight. Uh, but when they complained about water and food, these were internal issues. However, when Amalek comes, this is an external conflict. That on the inside, Moses is facing opposition. And on the outside, Moses is face facing opposition as, as well. And the text describes a still fighting Moses as heavy. It describes a, a still fighting Moses as weary. Have you ever been there before? Feeling heavy. Feeling weary. And not, let's not skip past the reality. He is still learning uh, what it means to be a leader of his own people. That Moses is juggling uh, a lot. That maybe that's you today. You having to be a mother, a wife, and a career woman. That's heavy. Having to be a husband, a father, and a provider. Pro provider that's heavy. Having to navigate school, side job, and have some sense of a social life. That's uh, heavy. Navigating entering a new de decade. Parents are aging and the economy is bad. 
said, that's heavy. That it's in these later stages of life, uh, feeling lonely, wondering if you've done enough. Uh, it's heavy. To someone that feels heavy, I want to encourage you, it's only human to feel heavy. It's very human to feel heavy sometimes. I'm talking to somebody, you don't want to be honest, and you got a front while we in church on good Sunday morning. Somebody asks you, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. No, you're not. I wish sometimes church was a place that we can be honest, that no, today I ain't feeling it. It's heavy today. That no, today I'm not feeling my best. It's heavy today. No, my children are getting on my nerves. It's heavy today. Is there anybody that's ever had some heavy days in your life? Heavy relationships, heavy job. However, the good news of the passage is, is that victory is still possible even in times of heaviness. Because I want to share something to you. It's something called Shannon's Theorem. Shannon's Theorem is the science behind juggling. There are a few main factors that involve any individual that is successful at the art of juggling. The ball or the item has to move at the right time, has to be thrown in the right direction, and then it has to land in the right hand. Right hand. It has to move at the right time, be thrown in the right direction, but ultimately land in the right hand. May, may, may I suggest that the struggling of juggling multiple things is when we hold on to things too long throw it into the wrong place and have it land in the wrong hands. And I wanted to help lift the heaviness of some person today. You've been throwing it in the wrong places. It's landing in the wrong hands and you've been holding on it to, for too long. As a matter of fact, this sets the stage for Jethro to pull Moses to the side and say, you're going to kill yourself if you keep doing all this on your own because maybe God is trying to instruct somebody here today because maybe God hasn't called for you to juggle in the first place. Maybe you need to let all of it drop to the ground so that the Lord can pick it back up again. I'm trying to tell you, I know you may be juggling it a lot in your life, but that's why the songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs to bear, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. I want to tell you today, stop juggling, but if you are juggling, God can still allow you to win while you're juggling a lot at the same time. Who am I talking to? on good Sunday morning. You won in your life, but you've been juggling a lot. You had some victories in your life while you're still juggling a lot. That's Moses needs a banner. I'm pushing. But then the children of Israel need a banner. Yeah. And, uh, I have to keep in mind that the children of Israel are newly delivered slaves. They have not been taught warfare one-on-one. They've been training, haven't been trained in anyone's army. They are newly freed slaves who have been spoiled by a covenant-keeping God. Please note, this is no easy terrain that they're having to navigate. They're going through uh, semi-arid arid and, and, and rough terrains. All, all the while, there are people that have multiple possessions and animals that have to be fed. And another later after this, this new path that they're having to take, uh, they're having to go into an area where their, some of their uh, relatives already are, which means that's land that they can't take from their, from their relatives. Physically, this is an arduous task, and emotionally, it's tough. Spiritually, it's going to take effort because uh, sometimes effort takes true work. And now these new, the newly delivered slaves have to fight against an enemy. But the present question we must ask, how are they going to fight? Or even who is going to fight? And God steps in and gives destructions to Moses, who gives to Joshua, tomorrow I'm going to go to the hill. And I'm going to lift up my staff. And Joshua does as Moses instructs. And Moses goes to the top of the hill and stands with the staff in his hand. Hands up, they win. Hands down, they begin to lose. It introduces something. How is Israel able to fight when they don't know how to fight? Obedience. Joshua is obedient to Moses, while Moses is obedient to Yahweh, that the only way they're successful is through obedience. But there's a second reality here. Not only, is the, do, you, not only do they fight through obedience, they also fight through harmony. 
You look at Rephidim in the Hebrew, the root of the word means support, that the root of the, the story of the fight of Amalek occurs in this place, that interesting, interestingly enough in their support of Moses, that is the avenue of their victory. There are three people on the hilltop. You got Moses, Aaron, and Ur, and when Moses grows weary, they take a stone, allow him to sit on the stone, and then the text says that they support Moses on both sides. Uh, and, and then the text clarifies that his hands remain steady until the sun goes down. Steady hands of Moses was made possible through the support of Aaron and Ur and the stone they provided for him to sit. A couple observations, I'm done. The text does not say that they had to be told. It doesn't tell us if they were already aware of the formula for winning. Did they know? We don't know. Or were they just watching and from their awareness made the necessary decisions to support their leader? What does it seem to happen when they take it upon themselves to support? You know the type of people I need in my life. The type of people I need in my life are the people that I don't have to tell to support me, but the people that can look at me and just have the awareness to say, no, he needs a good morning text today. No, I need to take them out to eat today. Sometimes it's beneficial to have people that can support you that don't, you don't have to tell them to. It's a picture. It's a picture of obedience, but one of harmony as well. Joshua in the valley fighting. Moses on the mountain lifting. Aaron and Ur are, are, are present supporting, which allows for the whole army to win. I'm trying it one more time. Joshua in the valley fighting. Moses on the mountain lifting. Aaron and Ur supporting so that the whole army can win. Uh, Moses is on the mountain, and, and victory is attainable because everyone does what they're supposed to do. Do you know what harmony is? It's the combination, Dr. Garrett, of multiple musical notes that when played together produces a chord that most of the times, unless done intentionally, pre uh, pre produces a pleasant sound. Joshua plays his note. Moses plays his note. Aaron plays his note. Ur plays his note, which then produces a song or a chord of victory. Do you know why some victory does not happen? It's because you got Negroes that always want to play their own key. And the reason why some organizations are off pitch is because you trying to play your own key. I'm trying to tell you the reason why some churches are not growing and thriving. It's because you got people wanting to play their own key. The reason reason why some houses are in this way is because you got people in the family wanting to play their own key. Rather, if you just play the appropriate note at the right time, it will produce a, a song of victory where everybody can win at the same time. I'm done. I'm in my seat. And Joshua defeated Amalek with the people in the sword. The Lord said to Moses, write this as a reminder in, in the book and recite it in the hearing of Joshua. I will utterly Blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You see two references to Joshua here, that this is Joshua's first introduction to Scripture. Yeah. We don't know Joshua prior, prior to now, but Joshua represents a younger generation. Yeah. And, and Moses writes it down, and, and, and God tells him, recite this to Joshua. Uh, Joshua um, it, it potentially is an illiterate man. And Moses, while he grew up in the private schools of Egypt, knows how to read and to write and writes it down because Moses understands the cost to forget yeah. is even more steep than the price we pay to remember. He writes it down and says, I'm going to name this altar. I'm going to name it. The Lord is my banner. The reason that Joshua needs a banner is the same reason that you and I need a banner, because the children of Israel have more battles to fight. There are five battles that happen under the leadership of Moses. However, because of the first battle, it, influenced every, it influences every battle they'll fight after that. This is why I suggested earlier, the cost to remember may be steep, but the cost to forget is even more steep. I'm done, but he names the altar Jehovah Nisi. Please note that whenever we name something, we're making a choice to name it. Uh, he could have named it anything, but he makes a decision. Jehovah Nisi. You remember a couple weeks ago, uh, Pastor Wesley surveyed that text 
where Moses meets God on the backside of the mountain. He's sending his father's sheep. And you remember what happens. Uh, there's a voice that comes from the burning bush. Moses, take your shoes off because the place that you're standing is holy ground. Moses, I got a job for you. You got to go tell Pharaoh, he better let my people go. And I, Moses said, wait, I can't talk that well. What am I going to do? He says, don't worry about a thing. I got Aaron that's going to be there, be there with you. And Aaron is going to support you in your weakness. And then you remember what happened. Moses has the audacity. Well, hold on, God. Listen, I'm about to go down there. But when I go down there, I need a name by which I can tell them has sent me unto you. And you remember what happens, that voice that comes from that bush. Tell them I am has sent me unto you. But hold on, hold on, church. I like Moses because Moses said, hey, wait a minute. In Egyptian society, we need first name and last name basis. God said, that's fine, Moses. Tell them I am that I am has sent me unto you. That what we see in Exodus 17 is building from the foundation of what happened in Exodus. Exodus chapter 3 because first impressions always have lasting impression and remember that's what we do when we come to church on good Sunday morning that's why big mama would say that God is my bridge over troubled water that's why the old saints would say he's my water when I'm thirsty my father when I'm fatherless the mother when I'm mother's a friend when I need a friend peace for a regulated mind my doctor when I'm sick my lawyer in the courtroom that that's what I'm doing I'm building upon an already experience that has happened before. Who am I talking to here today? Because if we gave the microphone to every row, somebody can say, yeah, he's been a healer to me. He's been a provider to me. He's been a regulator to me. He, he's, he's opened doors I couldn't shut. And he's made ways in my life. I'm done. Banner. Um, he's, he says, the Lord is my banner. Uh, it's a banner. It's a flag or a pole that I left off could be raised in victory. But Moses says, the banner that is typically raised after the fight, I'm able to raise before the fight. Because essentially, the Israelites no longer have to fight for victory. They get the opportunity to fight from victory because of what happens here it changes every battle after this i'm done one of dr martin luther king's most important allies in birmingham it's a black baptist preacher by the name of fred shuttlesworth christmas morning 1956 shuttlesworth announced that he was going to ride the city's segregated buses in defiance of the city's uh forbidding blacks to ride with white people the day before the protest on christmas night um uh diane mccordick uh chronicles the story she says that the Ku Klux Klan bombs the house of Fred Shuttlesworth. That, that, that night, neighbors and police officers came running toward the smoke in the ruins of Shuttlesworth House, and Shuttlesworth had been lying in bed. They, they thought he was dead, but a voice came from the wreckage. Shuttlesworth yelled out, I'm not coming out naked. <laughs> and after a few moments, he, he, he emerges from a, a coat that somebody threw him uh, into the rubble, he comes out, and after a few moments, um, he was not crippled, bloodied, or blind, not even deaf, even though there were houses down the street whose windows had been blown out. Shuttlesworth raised a hand to an onlooker and said, the Lord has protected me, and I'm not even injured. There was a big cop that was crying to the side, said, Ralph, I know these people. I didn't think it'd go this far. If I were you, I'd get out of town. These people are, are vicious. And Shuttlesworth looked at that big cop and responded, well, officer, you're not me. Go back and tell the Klan, if the Lord saved me for this, that means he'll save me from what's next. Goodbye, Alpha Street. But if the Lord ever did it before, the Lord is able to do it again. Hope y'all don't mind if I get out of here my way, but look at somebody in the room and say, neighbor, I gotta let you know that whatever God did before, um, he's able to do it again. 
Who am I talking to in the room? Look at somebody because you got to know that God is the God of encore performances. And I need to tell you, when you go home, you're going to have to fight again. When you leave these four walls, you got another battle again. But you can rest assured in knowing that because you've already won before, that same God is able to help you win again. I got to go now, y'all, but I've seen the lightning flash. I've heard the thunder roar. I felt St. Breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to keep on fighting he promised never to leave me promised to never leave me alone is there anybody in here that know you already won you've already got the victory if you know you got victory lift your hands in the air shout yeah I said shout Shout yeah, that's what I've been needed. I said shout yes. Shout yes. I, that's, I needed it the whole time. Shout yes. Is there anybody here? Bring me the whole thing so that I can have church a minute. Turn to your neighbor. Grab that neighbor by the hand. Shake that neighbor. Rock that neighbor. Can we go to Memphis for a minute? Shake. Shake that neighbor. Rock. Rock that neighbor and say, neighbor, when weeping shows up at your house, tell weeping you got to pack your bags because in the morning, I got company coming. Joy is going to come in the morning. If you got joy in the room, lift your hands one last time. Shout it! We're all standing, we're all standing. We're standing all over the building. We're standing all over the building. Maybe today, that's God's word for you. You need a rallying point. You need a rallying reality. You need a rallying name that you can always run to in the time of trouble. Moses says, I know who that is. And we want to make that opportunity available to you today. Here at Alpha Street, listen, Pastor Wesley would love to be your pastor. And the person sitting on your road would love to be your brother and your sister. And guess what? Even those of you that are watching online, we'd love to join with you over the virtual web because the Lord is our banner. You know, you know I, there, there are times I tell people all the time, I've, I've been preaching since I was a 16, um, since I was 16. Um, and, you know, as time goes on, you begin to mature um, and you learn different things. Um, there's some things that when you first start off, you're just talking about because that's what you heard. You, you don't have no bills at 16. You ain't got no, got no going on. But the older you get, these things that you only can talk about from hearing from other people, then you then have the reality to be able to speak about these things from experience. I'm trying to tell you, if you're trying to make the decision, I'm trying to tell you from experience, the Lord is your banner. Lord. So if you want to be a part of this body, body of believers, you can uh, email us at deacons, that's deacons with an S, at alfredstreet.org, and somebody will get back with you. And we'd love to have you as our family. Come on, put, God, put your hands together as Trinity comes and blesses us.
Now the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. And let us all say together, Amen. Amen.